Hey everyone, it's Night Force, and here we go with the Terraria 1.1.2 Magic Guide. These are all the weapons here that do magic damage. And one of them you will probably recognize from the Swords Guide, the Star Fury. The stars do count as magic damage, but we'll get into that later. For right now, the probably and most likely first item you will get that will require magic will be the vile thorn. As you can see you can cast it multiple times while there's still one out in the field. It is very good against anything else that casts spells like spellcasters, magical imps, Tim, the Enchanta. And uh, believe it or not, magic is very good at damage. He just disappeared to my view. Come back over here, test dummy. There we go. And by using magic, you can also get restart, uh, refill things, so you can keep going, which makes it so much nicer. But the vile thorn is a basic, um, useful magic item, and you will be depending on it, especially when tunneling in cramped places and something appears on the other side or if there's anything in the walls especially worms it is very good against worms because it can go into the walls the next item we're going by damage by the way here by from the weakest to the absolute strongest the next one is the aqua scepter it uses seven mana to spray a quick burst of water and if the terrain is just right you can actually hit them three times per jet and you can do a continuous flame kinda go with it at the cost of your mana some people suggest quickly you know sparingly tapping out will help you extend your burst for a longer period since it has a uh, tendency to lag out further you know like hang out in the air as you can see three hits is all it took for the skeleton I wish I could actually let's just go ahead and follow this dude and just trap him in a corner. Come on, dude. Follow me to the rest of my lab. Alright. And I I, uh, I can't do it right. I am I'm gonna go ahead and warn you guys, I am not a heavy magic user. Although, I would highly suggest magic be used, because it is very powerful, but in short bursts. Because then you can run out. You guys are already familiar with the Star Fury. It's, uh, uh, stars that it can summon down can do up to 15 damage, if I remember correctly. And they're capable of hitting twice. And then on top of that, the damage the sword does itself. Um... Just the stars themselves. I guess I gotta go ahead and show you guys again. Here we go from a distance. Oh shoot. Kill it, please. I'm hitting walls. I'm not good in caves. I'm gonna go ahead and say that. Now, the next one you're probably gonna get is the Water Bolt, which you can find in the dungeon. It is a ricocheting kind of spell. Slow moving, so it's very good for clogging up alleyways and tunnels. Let's go ahead and get our little test rat. We're gonna fire some this way, some this way. Look, Mom. No hands. There we go. Yeah, eat it. Ah, all three of them. Uh, they can go through multiple enemies as you just saw, and for 17 damage for 14, that's decent. Don't ever, da don't ever, don't ever diss it. Next one. Space gun. You use a flintlock pistol with some meteorite bars in order to get it. Now, as you will notice, it does eat up your mana. But if you have the entire spacesuit on you, it costs zero mana. So you'll be able to constantly blast it even more. And it gains more damage. It does uh, 19 magic damage. Let's go ahead and summon this little dude up. This gun is capable of traveling, I think, through three enemies before the bullet actually stops. Let's go ahead and get a whole line of them. There we go. Hey fellas. Boom, 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 boom. 
There you go, space gun, crafted, very useful. Next one we got, magic missile. This one is one of those cool kind of weapons. You click and you hold. It will then follow wherever your mouse cursor goes. However, if your mouse cursor travels too fast, it will then do the best it can to travel to the point where it goes. Now what happens if I was to let go right here? It will shoot off in the direction that is the opposite of me. So if I release from here, it's going to fly towards the skeleton statue. Now you can fling it, so to speak, by moving the mouse cursor in the direction, and while the bullet travels there, you can let go and it'll continue following that direction. Used to be that this thing could, uh... No, it wasn't this that used to hit twice. Used to. Well, let's go ahead. You can summon these things quite fast. There we go. Give my manas. And then we're just tursting around. As you can see, it does not have hardly any knockback. In fact, it says average knockback. Barely budged these skeletons. Now the next one that does damage is actually one of the more expensive items. Is something that you buy from the wizard for one platinum. That's a hundred gold coins, or a thousand silver coins, or ten thousand copper coins. Is the ice rod. This is a rather unique weapon. I myself have not actually used it that much either. But you can build a wall, and when you fire at the wall, your blocks will continue going. I am all out of mana. Wait for it to recharge. If you hold still while not doing anything, your mana will recharge faster. And the more mana you have, the... Uh, the more the faster it will recharge for it. As you see, the only way you can actually do damage to something is by putting a piece of block there and then firing at it. If you move somewhere else, it's going to make another block appear. So it's really only useful for attacking if you know you're going to be sitting in one spot. Now, if you play your games right, you can summon a block, grapple, summon a block, grapple. Summon a block grapple. You can keep climbing up indefinitely. And you can actually stay in the air. Indefinitely. It's a very useful for getting around. Creating walls. They actually create light when you, uh, um, need light in some places. For instance, over there. Probably can't see it that well because I have lower lighting settings for recording purposes. So it's very useful for strategic purposes, and uh, I have actually seen some players use it in a PvP battle. It's very interesting. The next one we got is the Crystal Storm, a player-made item. Uh, I will put how to make it off the side, and I've seen many people use it as a good melee weapon, especially in tunnels, because this thing is the minigun of magic. It is extremely cheap, fires a lot of bullets, extremely fast, and as they fire about and ricochet around, they slow down in velocity and kind of just drift about in a certain area. They can do a multiple damage mul multiple times to a single target. You just fire it around, they go straight in a good direction. It's one of my favorite magic spells. One more skeleton, just because I like it. <laughs> In your face. Next one is one of my actual kind of, you know, favorite to think of. You know, the magic dagger. Just throw a magic dagger. You can throw multiple magic daggers, even though the uh, thing, or even though the little subtitle says a magical returning dagger, it doesn't mean just singular. So you can throw it. It's quite useful. It could be good for a temporary... Um, temporary glow stick for like a quick second. You gotta account for the angle when fighting, which makes it useful for throwing up and then down cliffs, but this is not a very good area. As you see, it can go through two enemies before it disappears. Wow, 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 wow. Ooh, a hook. No matter how experienced you are, you're always happy to get a hook. So the magic dagger, you get it from uh, 
mimics, which are nasty little booger heads. Next one is the, uh, you could say it's an upgraded version of the space gun, however it doesn't do well with the space suit. It uses 8 mana, as well as the space gun, but it does more damage. Sorry space gun, I have to go with the laser rifle. This thing is relatively faster, farther, uh, eats up your mana quicker, but it can deal out a lot more damage for your mana. Two shots compared to the uh, space guns. How many was it? One, oh, one, two, three, four, five. Wow, it took five shots. Then again, I might have got a critical. I'm trying not to get too many criticals. But you get this from the Wall of Flesh. It's a very nice laser rifle. Um, not too much to say about it. It's useful for what it's useful for. If you like your uh, space gun, then that will be a nice weapon to change out if you want to do damage per second and get your uh, damages worth for your mana. Ah, Dynam Lag is making my clicks all funky. Alright, next one we got is the Magical Harp. This is a really unique one. As you see, if you cl click while, while your cursor is close to you, you produce a slow-moving projectile and a very, very deep tone. However, if you go far away, you produce a high tone and a very fast-traveling um, projectile. So we can go... We can go with a... That was my very bad try at Mary Had a Little Lamb. Screw you guys. It's capable of bouncing off of walls and piercing multiple, multiple, multiple times till the bullet disappears as far as I understand. I have seen people use this against the Destroyer and absolutely rape it within 18 seconds. You can tank the thing if you stack up enough magic damage with this thing. So bring on all the skeletons and... Clean them. And that was the slow moving projectiles too. Let's go with fast. Easy. And they even came back for more. Magical Harp is definitely one of the most unique, useful, because if you need to block off a hallway, just. and walk away. And once again, you can just fill up the whole room with just the notes. you can pretty much cover up an entire cave with this stuff, making it pretty much impassable for anything else that you don't want in there. Next up we got is the Flame Lash, the upgraded version of the Magic Missile. This used to be able to hit twice before disappearing. I love that, but they've changed it since then and now it's a fireball. The one thing I'm kind of sad about with the Flame Lash is... let's go ahead and prove it. Once again, you know, whichever direction that you are the opposite in from the fireball, it travels. Unless you're directing with your mouse. Is, uh, the flame lash cannot travel into never mind what the hay. That was not like that before. This used to not be able to go in water, which now it does now. Because I remember having such a pain in the butt going through a cave in hardcore mode, hitting water and trying to use that to look. But, uh, for 16 mana, it is just as much as the, uh, oh, wait. Never mind, it's 16 mana, that's 10 mana. The next item is 10 mana along with this. Um, for 16 mana, slightly more mana than the Magic Missile, it does a total of 12 damage more. This was one of the favorite magic weapons before one point. And I've seen some people in some PvP matches win with this weapon without even getting hit. As you would have seen in the cha uh, Chaotic Uniformity tournament that happened quite a while ago. For those of you curious though, the server is sadly offline indefinitely. 
won't be back up. Ever. One of the best servers I've ever been on. I've been playing around on a couple other those. So... Flame Lash, definitely a dependable magic weapon. Can also set your opponents on fire, I forgot to mention. I just like it. The only thing that's better than that is the next weapon up from it, but that's not till for a little bit. Here we go, we got the Demon Scythe next. Another spell tome. It's a very powerful spell at a relatively low cost compared to some other of the uh, items here. For its damage, it does pretty well. It produces a slow-moving blade that, after a few seconds, uh, advances further at a faster speed and produces light when it strikes the surface. It is very good against the Eater of Worlds, as you can just lay a whole line of them down and the Eater of Worlds can just walk up into it. So it's very... very powerful, although slow, not very useful in PvP fights unless you are... Not very good in PvP fights, unless you are uh, very good at strategic planning, which I doubt in a PvP fight. Now these days, you would have any time to think. Just shoot and hope. Next one is the Cursed Flames. It is a bouncing fireball. It bounces about everywhere. If I remember correctly, if these things catch you on fire, not even water will put you out, because they are cursed flames. These things bounce across the surface. And we'll go through two enemies, I think it was. Yep, two enemies. You can launch a whole volley of these things, and you can fill up a whole cave with them. And, once again, very useful. You will... I hate wraiths. As you can see, I just hit him twice. I feel so proud of myself right now. Here. That was easy. Alright. But anyway, Curse Flames, very useful. It's a nice upgrade from, you know, your usual Crystal Storm or your Water Bolt, but it does the same damage as the Demon Scythe, but it's more of the I need it now, give it to me now kind of attack. Next one up from there is the Flower of Fire, a Mario reference. Uses 17 mana and casts a Fireball that does not continue to go in a straight direction like the Curse Flames. Curse Flames will go in a continuous direction with very little gravity effect. However, the fire, the flower produces fireballs more so prone to arching and bouncing across the field several times. We can activate some of these. Now, these flames can be put out with water. So we can use some, a couple of these little things and then we can When did these guys actually aim out to attack me? I don't remember that. But anyway, Fire Flower, you can find it in Hell. It's a very high damage weapon for its mana cost. One of my uh, favorite weapons to use in Magic. Although I really don't pull it out too often because it's not good at long range and I actually prefer to use long range with Magic because, let's face it, what's the point of being up in the enemy's face with Magic when you can hit them from afar? Now the next one is the final and best one of them all, the Rainbow Rod. It follows along with the Flame Lash and Magic Missile. It uses 10 mana, just like the Magic Missile, and does more than twice the damage of the Magic Missile, and produces, even though you can't really see it here, a whole mess of colors come shimmering out of it in the darkness. It's a very useful little torch for lighting your path up in caves and such and this one sh should be able to go in water that's what I thought once again it also depending on your position 
when you let go when the cursor is still, it'll go in the opposite direction of you. Or you can toss it. Which is very good for, you know, sitting around corners and sending it back around and letting go. So we can easily, like, stand right here and send it straight down that way, even though I'm not directly in front, like so. So you can actually, once again, not expose yourself to the dangers, which is what magic is pretty freaking good at. I love the fact that magic is good at keeping you out of danger. But let's give this weapon its little try. And we're going to just spam this thing on them. It's one hit per thing. Per in per shot. But the damage it does makes each hit oh so worth it. Hmm. Wearing some, wearing a mana flower and the sorcerer's emblem and anything else that increases your mana will make these weapons even more so devastating and will turn you into a wizarding are a force to be reckoned with. And uh, that there will cover all of the magic weapons in Terraria. Now there are magic weapons that are not weapons. For instance, Orb of Light or the Magic Mirror. I will uh, cover those in another video. Now the next video I will be doing will be uh, probably ranged and um ranged and I guess bows ranged and spears there we go ranged and spears will be the ne next one I do next so keep an eye out for that I will be recording that within probably the next 24 hours and if you guys like what you see or if you have any questions subscribe comment I'll answer it to the best of my ability you guys take it easy take care have fun and